coming up on today's FaceTime. I am never satisfied. Los Angeles is our sister city, as is Guangzhou, so we're all sister cities together. Uh, they are cautious, but they are also courageous. Great, great grandchildren who now are citizens of Auckland and very proud. The Guangxi is strong, the relationships, the trust, the respect, and the regard is there. The trip from the President really just really cements that. Hare mai, hare mai, hare mai, si dada. On November 14, 2014, the Mayor of Auckland of New Zealand, Mr. Len Brom, started his visit in Guangzhou, China, which included the 25th anniversary of the sister city relationship between the two cities. As the capital of Guangdong province and the powerhouse for China's manufacturing, Guangzhou municipality became Auckland's sister city in 1989. In addition to the grand anniversary ceremony, Mayor Brom's visit also opened a new chapter for mutual friendship. What is the prospect for two metropolitan cooperation in the near future? Please turn into the latest episode of FaceTime. Obviously, it's the fourth time you're visiting China to here, right? Yes, uh, you're, we are here to celebrate the 25th anniversary between very Auckland occasion. and uh, Guangzhou municipality. How do you think, in your knowledge, how do you think the most rewarding cooperation in the, especially the key sectors and industries? Uh, I, so I think the most important uh, and rewarding outcome thus far has been the building of Guangzhou mm -hmm. uh, between New Zealand and China uh, and uh, between ourselves as cities. There is a very long history. People have been coming from Guangzhou and the Guangdong to Auckland for 200 years. Wow. And uh, so it affirms that history. Mm -hmm. uh, and then secondly, of course, we have had um, excellent outcomes around the area of tourism with China Southern now flying significant um, occasions daily now twice uh, into Auckland. Of course, many of the students are coming out of Guangzhou into Auckland and enjoying the education there. Uh, we're seeing that in high-tech development with a number of Guangzhou businesses investing in new height technology. Uh, so those are the types of outcomes that we're seeing aside from the cultural uh, and political benefits of two cities and two peoples coming to know each other superbly well. As a mayor, are you satisfied with the accomplishment between the two sides for the status quo? I am never satisfied. <laughs> uh, as a Shijana Okalan, uh, we are very, very focused on doing everything we can to derive the maximum benefit for Guangzhou and the maximum benefit for Okalan uh, out of this relationship. So with the 25th anniversary, it's a time to affirm uh, our friendship and our sister city status, but, in, uh, but also to look forward mm -hmm. uh, to the types of things that we can really focus on more. And those will be around the area of marine activity. Mm -hmm. uh, Auckland has great marine expertise and we would like to work with Guangzhou on that. Ports activity, both airport and seaport, where we're big international ports and seaports, where we can see greater outcomes there. So we are hungry for greater benefits to come from the relationship. How cities should be cooperate and engaged in 21st century? The answer is to be found in Guangzhou government's event on November 16th. Proposed by Auckland, a memorandum of understanding is to formalize as a tri-party economic alliance built upon Auckland and Los Angeles long-established sister city relationships together with the South China metropolitan Guangzhou. It is the world's first tri-city engagement, which will play a fundamental role on manufacturing and trade between three cities. Moreover, there will be joint efforts on four sectors with substantive cooperation, including innovation, the film and TV industry, trade and tourism, and education. I think all three cities recognize that the power of two is fabulous, but there may be even more to offer in the power of three. And uh, Los Angeles and Guangzhou have a long-term sister city relationship. Los Angeles is our sister city, as is Guangzhou, so we're all sister cities together. Uh, and uh, there is a lot of business and a lot of history between Guangzhou and Los Angeles 
as there are with us all. So we felt that there may be things, for example, like film with Los Angeles being Hollywood, and Guangzhou with a very significant film industry, and Auckland, of course, we are the biggest film uh, centre in New Zealand by a long way. So those types of examples meant that we maybe could take the three of us and, and uh, develop and get even greater benefit uh, under a tripartite arrangement. To you, sir, what are the most exciting cooperation or the highlights of the key sectors between the three sites? Uh, I, I think you'd have to say that, that there is the, the greatest benefit for me and what is most important for New Zealand and Auckland is the development of the high-tech sector. Um, Los Angeles, of course, has uh, significant advantages, a major contributor to new technology and ideas coming through its universities into, you know, very significant global powers and high tech. Uh, and, uh, you know, within uh, Guangzhou, you have a similar type of focus. Uh, great commitment to new technology coming through and uh, Guangzhou is a great manufacturing base is now starting to really get into high tech with its high tech parks mm -hmm. and for Auckland it's been the same we've been a great manufacturing base but now the future of our city and of New Zealand lies in really developing high tech new technology new ideas we all share that sense of energy and uh, an innovation imagination for the future mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that that to get the outcomes from high tech sharing uh, between our three cities I think could be very exciting for the future. But, so we obviously share a lot of bright sides of the story mm. but to you what's the major concern that is urgent to be addressed in the future? I think that uh, there, there, there are two concerns. We, we as a uh, very multicultural city we are a true international city 180 different ethnicities in Auckland from people all around the world uh, and to drive the, the, the great benefit out of that, rather than see that as a detriment, mm -hmm. uh, to drive the benefit out of that, 8% of our population are Chinese. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, we want to make sure that those people of different communities and countries, when they come to Auckland, mm -hmm. similar with uh, Los Angeles, very multicultural, and Guangzhou, very international city, mm -hmm. the big challenge is to maximise the benefit of that diversity of culture. And then secondly, and beside that, of course, it's environment. Every city wants to be the most livable city in the world. And we certainly are close to it, but not quite there. And much of that is about really preserving and maintaining your environmental sustainability. Mm -hmm. Clean air, clean water. And if you are able to produce a city with a high focus and performing well on both those fronts, then you are going to have a city that everyone is wanting to come and visit and stay in. New wave of globalization continues to transform the business landscape and has enormous impact on companies across the world. With the booming economy, China's outward foreign direct investments expanded significantly in the past decade. With moderate banking system and physical policy, New Zealand provides a sustainable platform for global investors. As economic center for New Zealand, and one of top 10 best investment destinations in the world. Auckland initiates a series of infrastructure and transportation constructions in recent years. How will the Cantonese firms and business people participate in the investments for the future in Auckland? Mr. Mayor, it's noted that the Auckland is under construction of infrastructures and uh, transportation as is planned. So, uh, do you suggest that any Cantonese investor to take part in, and uh, what is going to be their strength and weakness in that part? I, I, my observation of the Cantonese investors is that uh, they are cautious, mm -hmm. but they are also courageous. Uh, they, they are naturally entrepreneurs, as we Aucklanders are, so they're prepared to take a risk, but it's got to be a calculated risk. Yeah. Um, and so what we will be doing, and yes, Auckland is under construction now, but we're not moving with the amount of pace and momentum that I'd like to see us move, and where I see in Guangzhou. This city is hyperactive, mm -hmm. and uh, we are close to that, but not as close as I'd want us to be. Mm -hmm. So we welcome in. Guangzhou investors, particularly for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are, we've got a lot of transport infrastructure on the go at the moment, and we are looking to deliver what we call public-private partnerships, where there will be the opportunity mm -hmm. for the Guangzhou Cantonese investors to come in and perhaps get in partnerships with the, the government, with the council, 
in building uh, some of our infrastructure. And we welcome their inquiry and we will assist them as best we can within a competitive framework. Since the arrival of Chinese gold miners in the 1850s, Chinese immigrants and communities in New Zealand have become essential parts of the society. As the largest metropolitan international area in New Zealand, Auckland has the largest number of Chinese people living here. One in third Chinese in Auckland are from Guangzhou municipality. What's your comment on the Cantonese communities and their role have been playing for many years to Auckland? It's been um, essential uh, for Auckland's development. But as I say, they were there right at the start of our early colonisation. So first of all, in the original people in Auckland and New Zealand were Māori. And they came to New Zealand 900 years ago. And then we started to have the whalers and the sealers, about 1800. And the very early whalers and sealers, including those coming out of Guangzhou and Canton, and, uh, and so from that time, there have always been a steady flow of new Chinese migrants coming out of the Canton, out of Guangzhou, and they have contributed energy, hard work, uh, and enthusiasm and resilience. They've got guts and courage. You know, they work 24-7. Uh, uh, and now their children, great-grandchildren, uh, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, who now are citizens of Auckland and very proud, uh, are right at the forefront of our business in particular. Some of our sharpest minds in new technology and engineering and architecture and medicine, uh, our very best minds are often those youngsters uh, who are the products recently arrived or from generations back who've come from Guangzhou, and we love them. Excellent education system and good living environment make New Zealand as one of the most popular overseas study destinations in the world. As the largest city in the country and home to more than 400 schools and institutions for international students, including universities with the highest academic ranking, Auckland is regarded as the best choice for overseas study for Chinese students. During Mayor Brown's visit in Guangzhou, both parties make efforts to connect education institutions as another priority, paying great attention to student exchange, project cooperation and talent training. Currently, I'm studying in Sun Yun-san University as oh. a PhD of anthropology. Yep. So, and I'm thrilled to see you are about to start a cooperation between Auckland University uh, with the Sun Yun-san University. So, what's the main purpose of this cooperation, and why you're picking up the Sun Yun-san University? Uh, I think there's a very old re re uh, respect and regard. Uh, for a start, Auckland University has the Confucius Institute. Uh, and that institute has, has been very successful in, in helping at an academic level uh, for us to understand the history, the tradition uh, of Chinese society and community through the, the thoughts and words and philosophy of uh, Confucius. And we also understand uh, the leader, the chair of the revolution, uh, Sun Yat-sen, uh, and the very significant importance uh, of his place uh, in the history of China, particularly the contemporary history. So the connection between Auckland University and Sun Yat-sen uh, University is, is, uh, uh, is not accidental. It has been um, work that has been done for some time through the Auckland University to achieve that type of partnership and for the same type of reason uh, as they were able to establish the Confucius Institute there. So it's just a continuum mm -hmm. of better understanding the history and the culture uh, of the Chinese community and uh, Chinese culture and country and ensuring that we are able to use that understanding at an academic level to inform uh, the building of our relationship and respect for each other, our guangxi. New Zealand has always been the top uh, of the agenda of the Chinese overseas students to come and to study there. So do you think in the future that New Zealand will remain its position as the top choice of Chinese students, and how? I think it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. We're such a beautiful country. <laughs> and uh, look, the vision for Auckland is to create the world's most livable city. Mm -hmm. 
And that sense of livability is the thing that has really attracted um, Chinese parents to allow their sons and daughters to come to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And it's because they know that we are safe, uh, that we are welcoming and open and tolerant, mm -hmm. that we provide good host family arrangements, uh, that we are environmentally clean, clean air, clean water, uh, and that, that there is a real sense of welcome. For Māori, as the original people of New Zealand, and of course they came from China 5,000 years ago, so there's a very old link to China, but then when they, when they welcome people, they say, Hari mai, Hari mai, Hari mai, Hari mai, Hari mai, Hari mai, Hari mai. <laughs> That's what they say. It's three times welcome. Mm -hmm. It's ni hao, ni hao, ni hao. Three times. And I think that represents the reputation of New Zealanders globally. We're a naturally beautiful country, but we're also very friendly. Mm -hmm. And I think the students of China see that as their mums and dads do. When I was last here in 2012, mm -hmm. uh, we signed a MOU with our six uh, tertiary educational institutions. And many of those were based either firstly on ensuring that there was a level of student in exchange, so students were coming into our six tertiary, uh, tertiary level education institutions, but secondly, students would be coming from Auckland to uh, Guangzhou mm -hmm. uh, and Guangdong in particular to enter the universities here, the tertiary institutions here, study here, and secondly, the, the idea of ensuring that we had academics, doctors, lecturers, tutors, uh, also exchanging between our tertiaries and uh, those that are in Guangzhou. And uh, so that is the primary purpose of the, the tertiary exchange and what we're looking for uh, in the building of educational relationships going forward is very significant. Probably the most important part of our developing relationship between Auckland and Guangzhou. The relation between New Zealand and China has never been as stronger and solider as recently with the rapid growth of bilateral trade, direct currency converter, and frequent high-level meetings. A week ago, Chinese President Xi Jinping finished his third visit, although his first as president, to New Zealand. Along with an entourage of around 160 people, including 10 government ministers, President Xi met with Prime Minister John Key and government officials during two-day visit in Wellington and Auckland which showcased the strengthened bilateral trade, economic and cultural links. It is a gesture of the significance of New Zealand's burgeoning relationship with China, now the largest trading partner. Uh, what do you think it will to do with the mutual development of the relationship between China and New Zealand. I think that the relationship between China and New Zealand is clearly at an all-time high. Uh, and, you know, we have diplomatic relations now going past 62 years, so we, uh, we have always had a strong relationship. Only three, four years ago, uh, the President at that time and the Prime Minister said, we want $20 billion worth of New Zealand of trade every year. Well, now they've upped it to $30 million. Mm -hmm. Uh, $30 billion, and this reflects uh, the fact that uh, the Guangxi is strong, the relationships, the trust, the respect and the regard is there. And uh, this um, uh, trip from the President really just really cements that. There is a great history between the nations and quite frankly an even greater future. Uh, I, I think one of the most important elements of how we build that relationship are those 130,000 Chinese citizens in New Zealand, uh, in Auckland rather, and many of them out of Guangzhou, who use their networks back home, their family, their family in Auckland, to help us build that close understanding across all of the organisations that are represented, the Auckland Chinese Community Association, that help that understanding and that are cemented on those great social occasions such as Chinese New Year. There's nothing different in humanity. If people are prepared to come uh, and meet each other with an open heart and an open mind and a preparedness to see the differences and not let that stand in their way of great communication and understanding and ability to do business, then you can achieve anything. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thanks Cheers for the time. Thank you. Thank you.